One of my all-time favorite movies is The Lord of the Rings. If you've seen the movies, you know the storyline. But in short, it's a story of good and evil. A small group of people trying to overcome evil and destroy the evil. At one point in the movie, Samwise Gamgee says, there's always hope, Mr. Frodo. And that's the story of this lesson. In the midst of the hardship, in the midst of the destruction, in the midst of the terrible things going on for Israel, there's always hope. Conditions are pretty dire for God's people. As we saw in the last session, the implications of rebellion against God, the consequences have, have gone pretty full-blown. The, the northern kingdoms of Israel, the northern kingdom and its capital, Samaria, have been conquered completely and the people have been scattered by the invasion of the Assyrians. And, and in the south, the the people have been conquered but, but moved in mass, so they've lost their land, but they stay together in, in Babylon with the Babylonian captivity. But even there, things look bad. Nobody wants to be enslaved to another nation, and yet that's where God's people find themselves. This idea of a unified nation of God, who would be a blessing to the rest of the world as promised to Abraham, seems pretty far-fetched. Things look pretty bleak. And yet in Babylon, there is this little group of people, this captive nation. And though they're dealing with the loss of independence and freedom and of being a nation and of having their king and of pride and of, of dealing with abuses to their honor, they're dealing with all of those things, yet they're together. They're left with hope. For remember, God's desire is for us to worship him, whether things are good or things are bad. That's what God wants, for us to depend on him. And so in this session, what we see quite simply is that from this group of captives in the midst of this Babylonian captivity, there are some Ezra, Nehemiah, that God uses to return. To the promised land. This remnant will restore hope to God's people that they are given permission to go back and what they find there is devastation and destruction but they have a commitment to worship Yahweh and so they start to faithfully worship Yahweh again. This tiny little remnant begins to live the way that God desired for them to live. No false gods, just worship of Yahweh. They begin to rebuild the cities and the wall. They begin to conduct worship that is focused on Yahweh. Things start to shape up in the way that the people of God express themselves as the people of God. Things begin to look good again. That's kind of where we leave things in the Old Testament, this tenuous place where God's people have not fulfilled the promise to Abraham. They have not lived faithfully to Yahweh and been a blessing to other peoples because of their special relationship to Yahweh, and yet they've not been destroyed. And yet there's hope. And yet there's dependence on Yahweh, even though, even though at times things seem bleak. That's how we transition, really, from the Old Testament era, historically, to the New Testament. Now, there's a period in between that we'll speak of in the next session. But, but we leave our narrative in the Old Testament with this glimmer of hope. God's people long for the return of a king. God's people long for the return of a ruler and of a a unified being. God's people hope for the restoration of the priesthood. God's people look for that prophetic voice, the true prophet that can point them back to God, back to God's promises. And so we conclude the Old Testament not on great grounds, but with hope.
it, it makes me wonder in our lives how many times we have things that don't go well. We face physical ailments. We face struggles. We begin to think that maybe things are too hard. And yet, to be a Christ follower, to be a person of God, doesn't mean that things go well. It means that we trust the God who holds all things in his hands, whether things go well or things go poorly. We transition in this week from the old to the new and the fulfillment of that hope. We're asking the question today, what do you long for and what do you hope for? We're also asking, where do you go and what do you do in times of trouble and in times of stress? We hope these questions will help you further along in your faith journey. And as always, we're here to pray for you and to answer any questions you might have.